Hey everybody, Steven here, Gear Stuff and Things, back for another video because I promised you I would be. And I'm inevitably going to fail at this at some point. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be as consistent as I'd like to be because I'm just going to be honest with you. Sometimes I suck, but so do you. And uh, that's unfortunate. I'm kidding, of course. Well, we're being silly. Uh, sometimes we got to embrace the things about us that suck as people. As human beings, we should all want to be better and uh, achieve greater things. And you should feel that way about uh, your musicianship and the instrument you play. You should want to get better at it all the time. You should be looking for ways to improve um, just by learning things, taking lessons, you know, doing other things, whatever it takes to get a little bit better all the time. We all have musicians we look up to that we wish we played as good as them. Now, there are a few of us out there who may have egos at a level that prevents you from seeing anyone else as being as great as you. I am not one of those people. I have a pretty, pretty, pretty large amount of insecurities. Everybody, sorry to intrude. I just realized as I was editing this that I actually cut out mention of an article from Guitar Player Magazine that I found in 2000 where uh, Ty Tabor, the guitar player for King's X, was speaking about how when he embraced the things about his playing that he didn't like, that's when he discovered his own identity within the instrument. So you'll hear me refer to an article, and then you'll realize that without this little interjection, it wouldn't have made any sense and been completely out of context. Um, but I'm going to let some of those go today, and I'm going to show you the idiosyncratic nonsense that I do on guitar on a regular basis that has slowly become pretty much my identity on the instrument. When I say idiosyncratic, I want to emphasize the idiot part, particularly pertaining to me. So, um, without further delay, here are some stupid things I do on guitar that I generally am annoyed with myself about, but I also hearken back to that time when I read that article, which was over 20 years ago, and realized that I'm still doing a lot of things on the instrument that I was doing at that time today, because it's just part of my playing and part of my personality on the instrument. So let's get into them. All right, so let's get into some of the weird idiosyncratic stuff that I do on the instrument. Again, emphasis on idiot. Again, none of this is gonna be amazing. It's just stuff that I've leaned into over time because it was fun to me when I first picked up the instrument and I really haven't gotten away from it. Nothing wrong with that. I've also embraced all of these things so much that they're just a part of my writing in general. Every bit of these things, all these silly little moves, are in most of my writing, if not all of it. So, uh, we'll start off with open tunings. Um, so, most of my six-string guitars are in some version of an open tuning, uh, either open E or uh, dad-gad, that sort of thing, and my baritone guitars are no exception. All of those tend to be tuned to open A flat or open G sharp. So, to put that in perspective, this G sharp, D sharp, G sharp, C sharp, D sharp, G sharp. So uh, as you've noticed, there are some repeating notes there. And um, that allows me to do interesting stuff with octave chords. And octave chords are another crutch of mine. So you have your general octave chord, which is just taking one note and then uh, skipping a string and going two frets down. And you're just repeating the notes. Everyone knows what an octave chord is. This is not a lesson, by the way. I'm making zero effort to show you how to do these things. I'm just telling you about the silly things that I do. And uh, if you want to learn about octave chords, if you're at that level, then uh, you're on YouTube. Go find a video that will teach you those things. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. I'm just showing you weird, silly things that I've embraced in my playing over time. And I just really haven't gotten away from them because there's nothing wrong with that. So, octave chords. <laughs> That's fun to me. And then when you're in a drop D tuning, um, you can do them just by taking the lowest string, skipping a string, going to the next string on the same fret. And sometimes that's just fun to do, especially if you're playing a single note thing. Sometimes it's funner to just do this. I have never grown out of this. I still enjoy it. As a matter of fact, the song Sugar for Rats that's on Modern Witchcraft's record 
I'm plugging it right here in the video. I'm plugging it. There's a video. It has Morgan Lander from the band Kitty in it. Um, the chorus of that song is all octave chords. It's simple. It doesn't matter. It just sounds good, and it sounds big, and that's all that matters to me. It's big, and it's fun. Moving right along to another weird uh, idiosyncratic thing that I do on the guitar, and that is reversing chords. So if I'm playing your general bar chord, I'll flip it. So just switching the positions of those fingers. So if you got these two, I'm just flipping them. I don't even remember where I learned that the first time. I just really like it. It doesn't have to be a bar chord either. It can be just a general single note, but another... I, I don't know why I like it so much. It's just weird dissonant stuff. It's a lot of fun to play. It feels good. It's also a nice change of pace. Um, I also will take that a little bit farther, particularly um, when I'm writing parts that are just like bar chord oriented on drop D type tunings. So if I'm doing something like this, I'll take that same shape and rather than doing the octave, which is also an option, I will now just move one of my fingers back. So rather than doing the octave, I'll go to the third string, move it back a fret. Sounds different. It still retains the same root note, but it's now a little more uncomfortable and dissonant sounding. Or you can take it a bit further if you're someone like me who plays an open tuning and then move yourself down to the fourth string and do the same thing. And that's something I have never grown out of. It's still in my writing to this day. The record that I'm currently working on has it all over it. It's just home for me. It feels comfortable. Is it that interesting? No, not at all. Is it groundbreaking playing? No. But does it make me happy as a player? Sure. I like the way it sounds. I like the way it feels. I like the way the guitar responds to it. It's just something that appeals to me. And it doesn't matter how silly it is. I like it. So this one is just dumb. Like, I have no other way of explaining this, but it's stupid. But it's fun to me. And it's just peddling notes. Just doing this. I don't know why it is that that appeals to me so much, um, but I love it. I love bands that just kind of heavily rely on that type of playing too, like just note pedaling, like the band Interpol, for instance, like just has a lot of that. Any of that stuff. I don't know why I like it so much. There's simplicity to it. It's definitely a thing like bands like Queens of the Stone Age do, and as I mentioned, Interpol. I don't know why I love it so much, but I really do. There's something caveman and simple about it that just appeals to me, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's fun to, you know, have nice driving parts. I've not gotten away from that at all. Like, when I write things, I tend to write pedaling parts a lot. There are, I would say, in the last five to six records I've recorded uh, with my the two bands I've been a part of in the past 15 years, um, there's at least one song on every record that's just a song that pedals. Like uh, Modern Witchcraft, the single uh, Sugar for Rats with Morgan Lander. That's me getting a plug-in. Hey, I'm getting good at that. Yeah. Anyway, check out the record. But uh, that song has a bunch of pedaling in it. The whole, the verses are... Is that? The choruses are all octave chords and pedaling? What? And that brings me to yet another stupid move. And that's taking something that repeats multiple times and then changing it by almost nothing at all. Just moving it one fret up or one fret down to just change the feel. And that song in particular is a prime example of that. There's a portion of that chorus that rides out. And then we just take it up a fret. And it's, 
it's not hard. There's nothing even that interesting about it. But that tonal shift is enough to like catch someone off guard, especially if you've been repeating something for a long time. Any little variable is going to stand out. Um, there's also an expansion of that, and that is something I stole from Lamb of God. If the lowest note that you're going to, they do this a lot with like breakdowns. So if the lowest note they're going to, or the lowest note that you've heard them go through through a song, maybe on the first fret. But for emphasis, they may just go to the open note after repeating it so many times, and now it sounds that much lower. So if I'm... And then the next time it comes back through, that's a big difference. It's not harder to play. You've really not done anything. You've actually done a little less. You've taken your hand off of the fret. And it's created some sort of weird impact that it wouldn't have created otherwise. So there you have it. A bunch of silly stuff I do on guitar that I've never grown out of. I've done it for over 20 years, and I still go back to it. And I know the last video was about getting out of your comfort zone, and it's that's good. It's good for you to get out of your comfort zone. It's also good to not beat yourself up for not being Steve Vai or Tosin Abasi or any of these people. And if you're capable of that stuff, more power to you. I guarantee you, you have things that you're annoyed with your playing about as well. I don't think that sentence came out of my mouth correctly, but you're going to have to deal with it. Because as I mentioned previously, sometimes I suck. None of the things I showed you were that interesting. But if you go listen to any of my music, you'll hear them all over the place. And in the context, they can sound really cool. On their own, being shown to you the way I did, they're not that interesting at all. As a matter of fact, most of it's pretty lame and not exciting and it sucks. I've embraced the suck and I've made it a part of my playing. All of these little things that I used to hate and try to avoid, I've fully embraced and I just let them be a part of my creative process. I also consistently try to learn new things and incorporate those new things into these old things that kind of suck. And I know I've said suck a lot and I'm picking on myself. But the point is, is I think as musicians, we kind of tend to pick on ourselves a bit about not being as good as someone else. And people do this in life in general, and it's stupid. Point being, is it's okay to do the thing you like if it's what you like. And it's also okay to lean into a thing that you may not be super stoked about in your playing because that very well could be your personality on the instrument. If you, if you look at all kinds of guitar players, they all have a thing they do. The ones you know the most have a tone you know, or they have a particular thing and a way they play things that you're aware of. And that goes all the way back to like the Hendrix people, like you know, Hendrix, Ray Vaughan, like all these, you know, legendary guitar players that people obsess over. Part of why they obsess over them is because they have a thing. On their own, just listening to those isolated guitar tracks, you go, eh, it's a guy playing a guitar part. But the attitude and the approach and the personality of that individual that's what makes them have their identity. The guitar players that I look up to the most aren't doing the most incredible shit. Um, my, one of my favorite guitar players of all time is Stefan Carpenter from the Deftones. He, he doesn't do anything that's hard. Most of it's quite easy. But is it effective? And can I pick him out if someone plays me a song of his that he played on, even if it's not a Deftones song? I can tell if he played on it because his stamp and his imprint of who he is as a person and his personality is coming through because he leans in. All I'm saying is don't beat yourself up if you're not where you'd like to be. You can always try harder and keep learning new things, but also fully embrace the things you already know and find a way to make them your own. That's it. I know I've said that already, but it's been me. It's been you. It's always you. This is your stuff and things and until next time 